Um, we would like now to um, give the floor to uh, Muhammad Ali Pate. Muhammad is the our global director here at the World Bank, our global director of health, nutrition, and population. Um, he's a former Minister of Health of the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Um, during his tenure in, 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 as a Minister of Health in Nigeria, um, he, had, he led the Presidential Polio Eradication Task Force uh, and developed uh, some innovative results-based initiative uh, that have uh, led to the savings of millions of lives in, in, from preventable mortality. And, and strengthening primary health care. Um, so without further further I do I do I will pass the floor to Mohammed. Thank you very much Mohammed to join for joining us and the floor is yours. So thank you Roberto and also thank you to the other panelists. Uh, Suri very good to see you after a very long time. Um, I, I think this pandemic is still unfolding and the health, social, economic and political consequences of this pandemic are far from being totally clear at this point, even though we know that they all will be significant across all those dimensions. Already the pandemic, in my view, is upending quite a bit of the underlying logic that we've operated over the last two decades, I would say, in the, uh, in the sense that when you look at where the virus has found its most devastating impact uh, so far has been in countries that traditionally, when you compare with sort of where we were with Ebola, uh, that focus on the lower income countries. Here so far has been the high income and upper middle income countries mostly, and still making its match and we'll see uh, its impact on the lower income countries. Uh, it's probably going to be uh, equally significant but that's traditionally not the way we um, envisioned pandemic threats, uh, where the weakest countries basically um, uh, uh, sort of first to take the hit, and uh, more the global security lens is from the point of view of uh, the uh, traditionally stronger countries uh, being able to deal with it. So in that context, uh, this discussion and uh, much of what the other speakers have alluded to, I think are very real issues of debate and lots of questions. Um, should we talk about global governance or should we really speak about uh, international cooperation uh, across uh, countries? The backdrop for this, obviously, as was mentioned, there are underlying political shifts that were happening on the global landscape anyway. Uh, with the multipolarity, with also the nationalism that we'd seen, um, and also what I say as the atrophy of the legitimacy of the state itself. So we've got several multilateral uh, constructs, but in a time when in some areas the legitimacy of the state itself was becoming shaky or was being eroded, uh, to just deepen that, uh, we have in an unprecedented way huge numbers of global partnerships around health but yet what strikes one is that there's very little consensus when the most important pandemic or the threat that has we've uh, faced in the last uh, maybe 100 years it came there was absolutely no uh, clear consensus in the way if you look at how countries responded uh, closing the national borders the hoarding of equipment and supplies and all the health nationalism that uh, became. So that's an, an important point that was how the system that we had actually hasn't really stood up uh, to the test as well as it should have. And on the line that uh, been huge asymmetries, I would say, in legitimacy uh, on the landscape uh, the, the, in a way that you've got excellently legitimated institutions uh, but did not have the commensurate legitimacy on the side of those who it is trying to influence. And um, th that brings in not only the state actors, but also the non-state actors that have a say. And also with that, um, in a way, there's little real instruments of holding accountable, except through civil society, for instance, 
uh, other than that, the accountability mechanisms uh, were weak. And then you add to that the backdrop of the uh, hyper-connectedness of the world and the information age that we are, where there's very little, um, uh, what was the truth? <laughs> it's very uncertain. And with that, what do you trust and what do you don't? And then the huge inequalities that existed even pre-COVID, which have been there, this is not new, uh, over the last 20 years, and have been widened both across uh, within uh, and, uh, and, and across countries. And so the question then is, was the global health uh, governance system that we had uh, prior to COVID optimal or not? I'll argue that it needed continued, it still needed a lot of work uh, because there's some very big issues that had not been uh, fully addressed. And that uh, in some areas, if you're from uh, a country perspective, you will see the global health system, uh, it could work for the system or it could work for solving problems at the country level to actually get tangible action at the, at the, at the country level. And, and that that was not always um, uh, maximally done in terms of translating some of those uh, global to the, 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 the local. So COVID pandemic exacerbated some of this uh, in a way, it sort of uh, played into these four lines and has continued to 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 to, to do that, and we are seeing that unfold. So as we move forward, obviously, uh, like my other panelists uh, mentioned, uh, we will see the return of the state, uh, but that's still uh, um, that that's not the same as sort of the. The, the 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 legitimacy of the state doesn't really solve that itself because the state's legitimacy has to be earned or or through the process through which the consensus is to recognize it uh, but the state will be uh, stronger but with that also we've seen the weakened multilateral uh, institutions i think it's fair to say and uh sorry mentioned it multilateralism uh, and the multilateral institutions i think are in a much weaker state and the more national uh, state institutions are much stronger. And then that has not been made easier with the rise of non-state actors, the private sector and others also who have an important uh, role to play. So all in all to say that there's a variable appetite, I would say, for global cooperation, as you see on the last game, it's mostly driven by national interests and the emergence of new power blocks. And as we go move forward um, in the context whereby the global system itself is facing crisis of uh, well, say um, legitimacy. Should we think of recreating a global health uh, system and governance mechanisms of the past? And that's the risk always. We claw back and try to rebuild what we had before this crisis happened, assuming that the COVID is just a dent. Uh, I would argue that the landscape, the political landscape within which we operate, has changed fundamentally and it will change even more so and that uh, we need to think about uh, uh, global health governance in a different way into the future including bringing uh, voices that uh, were historically only present on the margins but effectively did not have much say in what was going on around them even though it had to do with them and by that, uh, you just need to look at the um, sort of the, the institutions. Uh, yes, on the governance and uh, various uh, constituencies, you may have representation, but effectively, the the explicit uh, taking into account of 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 those uh, other voices in the agenda setting, uh, even in 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 in, in leading those institutions. I think there's still a lot of work that needs to happen uh, to shift from what it was in the past. Uh, and, 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 and Southern uh, countries, in a way, um, if it's all about the globe, then the, the voices will need to be definitely uh, much, much more uh, robust than just side participants uh, in, in many of those. And you just need to look at several initiatives uh, to realize that, in fact, we have a challenge of inclusion uh, still uh, to overcome, particularly if you want to influence uh, people 
and deal with issues that are relevant to them in their own country context rather than in some other global bubble. I think I agree that the we'll see the regional blocks play an important intermediary uh, role um, where the wider global um, uh, uh, frameworks are a bit shakier uh, as a counter to really the more national re re um, uh, focus. And then thirdly, I would say that the idea of multi-stakeholder networks is, is, is real. That's really where we are heading. And we should think more in terms of network governance and use uh, the, the, there's a body of knowledge uh, around how network governance has played in other sectors, not health, and how that actually comes to bear in the context of global health uh, because of the nature of what we're dealing with on the landscape, which is fragmented. And there's other areas that have emerged, which are, I think, uh, um, under attended. Uh, so things like the use of digital technology and the, the, the further exacerbating the haves and have nots in terms of access and how to govern that. Uh, I think it's a whole new area, which I was struck that even the high income countries haven't dealt with chocolates on the global scale. And yet we're sort of huddling our way through that. Um, and maybe not directly linked to governance, but the ethical framework around global health, I think we need to sort of think about that uh, a little bit more. So those are some of my thoughts. I have to say that these are still uh, forming because the pandemic is still with us, uh, still matching its way. And I think we're nowhere near where we can say that we fully understand all the ramifications or the impact it will make on global health institutions and global governance and the politics that will ensure in the period ahead. So uh, those are some of my remarks, but I really appreciate hearing uh, the perspectives of the previous speakers as well. Over to you, Robacho. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Um, thank you for these reflections and these considerations. Indeed, we're still uh, going through the, the, the process of the, this pandemic and what's coming next. And I think these are important questions that we are, we need to face sooner than later. And this is one of the key objectives of this discussion. Um, 